So welcome to Once Upon a Pandemic with myself, Yvonne Redden. And this series is all about sharing stories and staying positive through the, this pandemic, in particular this lockdown. It seems to be very hard at the minute for a lot of people. And I'll be chatting to people from around the globe. And today I am chatting to Stephen MacDonald, who is a thought leader and coach. Thanks for joining me, Stephen. Not at all. Pleasure, Yvonne. Absolute and pleasure. Listen, first of all, I mean, I ask everyone, how are you staying positive yourself? And have you got like some kind of daily routine? How am I saying positive stuff? Yeah, um, well, daily routine is a key part of it for me. For me, and it's it's taken a while. So it's taken uh, over a year now to to kind of hone it down bit by bit. But I had I'd have the semblance of a, of a routine or of elements I do regularly. Yeah. And no, they have an impact. Like the yeah. the big one for me is the mornings. Yeah. It's uh, start the day off well. Start the day off right. Um. So I try and keep my uh f let's call it phone interaction down to a minimum uh, and yeah. what i really love is what's called morning pages morning journals and i love so, that that's julia cameron's idea isn't it yeah i yeah. have her book like there I, I bought the book during pandemic actually to rediscover all that as well i i love that yeah the artist way yeah what's great yeah. and what i really talk away from it is the journaling part is actually every morning three pages just yeah. fill them yeah and the, the the clarity and the, the the cleansing nature that has on the yeah. head is brilliant. Yeah. And, and do you look back, back over them then? Yeah. Yeah. It's if if I know it's something that I know getting stuff out of my brain that I know I, I have to do, I look back over and say actually what's important. Yeah. And just circle it. Um, if it's stuff I just need to get off my head, sometimes I won't bother looking over because it's gone and done. Yeah. Um, so it's it's a bit of both depends on but depends on what's what's been coming out. Yeah, and I'd say you have a, a nice pandemic journal there the last year. If you have morning pages, it's it's getting there bit by bit. Um, and what I tend to do as well, like I I'm one of these um, I I see journaling as a function rather than as a recording. So like I mm. I, I what I was journaling on today, <laughs> just the food's got paper. You like writing then, yeah? So it's you have just, that writers, yeah. Just, yeah. It's 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 great just to clear the head. Um, sure is. Like, what I would do, and I would work with uh, a lot of clients on doing, is actually clear the head and just put it put it all down. Because if mm. it's all down on paper, it's all down somewhere. Yeah. Then it's not in your head, and you can start to think about it, and then go back and look at that and say, right, well, how do I organize that into priorities? Or else burn and it. <laughs> and, and sometimes burning is important. Yeah. Uh, it, it can be ritual. Gone then, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um. But yeah, like a, a lot of people, I, I've noticed they're putting to-do lists together and all that sort of stuff. And I, mm. I, I kind of looking at not to-do lists, yeah, rather than to-do lists. So, mm. um, I've cut down my social media interaction. I've cut down my notifications on the phone. Mm. Um, I'm using the sleep time section, so the phone goes to sleep automatically at, at eight yeah. o'clock in the evening and activates itself back up again at uh, just quarter to seven. I think that's so, that's uh, very good because, you know, it's a good bit of advice to give. Don Harris gave a lovely talk on the V-Bond yeah. last Friday and about listening. And he said even, you know, don't do emails at all hours of night time. You have to do your nine to five and that's it. It's just yeah, your that boundaries, boundaries are really important. Yeah, and, and having I, the boundaries. I found yeah, the, 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 a lot of people talking about work-life balance. You might have heard that used quite a lot. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's language I actually, I personally don't like mm. because to have balance means something, unless you're at equilibrium, something's at loss. Mm. Um, I prefer the work-life blend. Work-life Because blend. no matter what way the blend works out, it can be a strong blend or a weak blend. Yeah. It's still palatable. Yeah, that's and there's exactly. times where you need to, you need to work around and and that mindset thing is a, is a is a big big thing for me and like I would do a lot of uh, breath work, uh, breathing, mindfulness, stroke meditation. Yeah. Um, a lot. I know. And again, I get. I won't say I get into to, to trouble, but I would have conversations with people that say, "Oh, you have to do this to be mm. saying it's mindful practice." I'm going, no, no, mindful practice is when you're actually just mindful. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's very hard to set goals at the minute. And this last year, you can't. I mean, people are talking about goal setting and planning, plan to a certain extent, but we we really can't plan the next few weeks. Never mind the whole year. Yeah, well, I. I 
God, I think we do, there's no point in putting too much pressure on ourselves, you know, because we have enough Absolutely to get through not. as it is, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of the word goals. No. Uh, in fact, my, my, my Gaelic day is goal. A goal has a, a keeper in front of it, so it could be a challenge to get to. Yeah. Uh, I prefer setting targets. And yeah. what's worked really well this year for me is actually micro targets. Yeah. So instead Absolutely. of setting them long out, yeah. set them weekly. Yeah. And and doing that is a really good way then. I, <clears throat> and the approach I take on, on my, my planning, uh, daily planning is based on the uh, Gary Keller's book, The, the One Thing, is mm. when I'm working on something or I want to try to figure things out, I'll actually just do a load of post-it notes of what I have to do. They go on to my board. Yeah. And that's just everything. Yeah. Out of that, when I'm looking at something, what I have to do next, I actually analyze that and say, right, out of that, what are the next two things that are important? Yeah. And they go into the selection then. And then of those two things, what's the one thing I must do now? Mm. And that's a great way of actually just getting over that fog and that mm. uh, decision fatigue, which can come from where we are at the moment. Yeah. And taking that approach of everything down to mm. important, down to yeah. The one yeah, thing I must do that's, now. That's, that's a, that's really a great, great bit technique. of advice. And one mm. thing at a time. You know, I suppose your title says that you're a business all-star thought leader in challenge and motivation or change and motivation and help business leaders to stay motivated when they hit a plateau. I mean, I'd say a lot of business, you know, business leaders have hit a plateau the last 11 It's been months. It's been difficult. It has yeah. been difficult. And you, <clears throat> for, for different leaders, different people in different positions, it's been, it's been very challenging. So for... A lot of business owners, likes of of myself and yourself, it's yeah. uh, it's difficult because you're seeing your cash burn go, you're seeing your reserves de uh, deplete, mm. you're seeing lockdowns, you're seeing customers that are harder and harder to get to, yeah. And um, so, kind of keeping that motivation and that's that recognize what the wins are is is really important on that side. Yeah, and how do you do that with your clients? Um, it's, it's awareness is a really important part of it. Yeah, uh, conscious awareness is really really important. So. When, when you look at, when you tend to look back, you tend to look at what you didn't achieve. Mm. I'd be more inclined to say, well, log what you achieved. Mm. And rec from that, what works? Mm. I and suppose everyone has different ways of thinking as well. I mean, you're going to be dealing with different clients. That not everyone's going to think the same thinking, way. Yeah, yeah ways of thinking uh, tends to be habitual as well. Yeah. So even looking at and, and talking about and exploring how somebody thinks and how they're actually framing something so for example traffic is a great one it's one i use all the time um if you're sitting in the m50 in, in traffic is it traffic is it bad traffic is it nightmare traffic a lot of those are ju judgments we place ourselves on things mm. so if you take the judgment away and just look at the facts yeah it can be very very easy to actually identify what's been achieved and what's not been achieved yeah whereas we if we tend to to put our judgment in it can start to cause a bit of a challenge because yeah. what what i may find really really good somebody else may may find is exceptional yeah and somebody else may find is not is not good enough so yeah. it's 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 that opportunity just to pull back on the judgment a small bit can be really good and, and look and, and it's a phrase i use quite a lot uh where this is a pandemic it's it's brutal um there are people who have kids at home that are they're, they're that aren't in school and what i always say is you got to be kind to yourself because just a lot of people are now working at home or yeah. i like to flip that you're actually living in work yeah yeah try to educate your kids on an emergency basis yeah and what did you just during say before this before pandemic. we went on here you called it emergency school and yeah i don't i don't i don't frame it as work from home because or yeah. uh, um homeschooling because a lot of people get very frustrated kind of oh i can't do this homeschooling and all that sort of stuff and i'm just saying, yeah absolutely you can't it, it's homeschooling is a choice you're mm. not doing homeschooling because mm. you're not making that choice this yeah. is emergency education yeah, yeah. It is. and there's a really big difference between the two and it's it's like um it's like trying to compare somebody who's preparing to go and swim and open. I know, I know you're, you're a, an outdoors person. So try to compare somebody who's going to swim 400 meters in the sea versus somebody who's just trying to stay afloat because they came off a boat. Yeah. Yeah. They're both trying to swim, but for very different reasons and yeah. for very different outcomes as well. Yeah, and, yeah. and that's where I think a lot of people need to be is, is today is yeah. to, to recognize that we are on the lifeboat scenario for a lot of times. And mm. let's let's just work on getting through it. Yeah. And after that, we'll start to look at, OK, well, what did we learn? 
Yeah. And I think it does a lot of, you know, the WhatsApp school groups and all that kind of thing. I turn my notifications off, Stephen, because you know what? Like some people are embracing the homeschooling or the emergency schooling and some people are not. And that's yeah. okay. You know, I mean, I do a little bit. I don't do a lot because I just think, as we said before as well, the kids are learning stuff at home from us. And I mean, and I think that's more important that they come out of this scene that we survived it and we're okay. You know, that's the main thing. So, and I was going to ask you there what a thought leader does, What, but I think you've kind of explained that it's, it's just changing the way your, your frame of mind and what way you think. Yeah, like what I love to do is is I, I love conversation. Like yeah. Because exactly. yeah. I love the opportunity to, to find out what people think. Yeah. And maybe ask questions around what they think and why they're thinking. Um, and that that gives that opportunity for exploration on both sides. Because mm. I, I'm not right on everything. Absolutely and I'm far from it. And I love I love conversations that allow me to expand my my understanding on something. Yeah. Um and I love giving people that opportunity to expand their own um kind of mindset as well and open themselves other up, up to other opportunities yeah that in the long run is going to benefit them yeah absolutely and are you busy at the moment Stephen? are you you've have you had to pivot yourself or how is I, I, yeah I've, I've done some some very strong pivots uh yeah. over, over the last uh year and look th things are not bad it's mm. tough um mm. I, I, i'm not going to, to to lie on that one but i'm not in a bad position i'm, I'm happy enough where, where we are at the moment yeah um and it's it's I think 2021 for me is going to be nice and strong. I have mm. some some good things happening. Yeah, I have some good plans in place. Um, and if it's a challenge, it's a it's a challenge. You just learn from it. Like I've learned more about business management and mm. restructuring from the business owner side than than I ever did before. Like yeah. from a from a management side and from a, <clears throat> a kind of a, a mid-level manager 2009 2010 taught me a huge amount and yeah. now with this on board it's, it's it's just giving me an extra layer of yeah. complex understanding which is fantastic and i think the virtual it thing brutal, it is brutal the virtual side of it like this hasn't been too bad because i think it's opened up a lot of opportunities to meet these people yeah. that you admire i mean i have spoken to lots of people you're probably the same that you didn't think were accessible and they they are because they're at home as well, so you can pin them down. And I have to say that part of it for me has been like, I'm overwhelmed as well. You know, it's been a great opportunity for, for me and I'm sure a lot of people, the business groups well, are great as well. one of the things I love about the last couple of years, the, like the level of digitalization, yeah. like so Twitter, I find is, <clears throat> I use it as a fantastic tool for conversation. Yeah. Um, and and those, those elements as well, all add into, the ability to make positive and again th that's that's another example of where some people see that as an opportunity mm. some people see it as a problem and yeah. it's all about a judgment call yeah but it's the same thing yeah absolutely it is and is there anyone that you admire or admired throughout your career um there, there's, there's a couple of people um yeah. I, I suppose one that i i'm kind of over the last couple of years i've got to know a, a lot of her work quite quite uh, in depth um is Brené Brown yeah I think some of her work is fantastic mm. and it's it's allowing those it's allowing permission for those hard conversations to happen mm. they, they really are and somebody else uh who comes to mind um just in relation to had a really big impact on on, on my direction um would be Wayne Dwyer yeah uh, he passed away there a couple of years ago because like I had a I had a tough 2012 and yeah. His book "Excuses Be Gone" was definitely. Um, I was actually listening to the audio version of it, and it it, it had a, a profound effect on me. And I really loved his his approach and actually questioning things. And that's that's what brought me into that kind of that that mind of how you're how you're holding on to something can be quite habitual, mm. uh, and and that just openly questioning things and answering yourself honestly. Yeah. And then questioning that answer. I think we find it hard to do that, Stephen, don't we? And I think as Irish people in general, we do. I think, mm. and that's across the board, isn't it? I think people... And, that, and that's where mm. the job I have is fantastic and I yeah. really enjoy it because that's what coaching is, is, yeah. is that ability to to be that person for somebody. Yeah. Be it in something they want to go through in life, uh, they have challenges, or in business. And, and the... Like the, the the experiences I've had and the work I, I I've managed to do with some people over the over the last year, I've got given a lot of pro bono sessions to to business owners who've been challenged. 
Yeah. But it's allowed them to to take those extra steps and to move through the mud and get mm. to the far side and realize, you know what, I just keep on going and actually get through this. And it must and be nice to see better. that that transition as a coach. Um, it's 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 great and like I I love seeing I I've described myself as a kind of back of house person a lot of the time. Um, I, I don't see myself as the person who's, who's put doing that because I'm not doing the hard work. I'm, I'm asking the questions and yeah. doing the listening. It's it's the clients who are doing the hard work. Mm, so mm. I, I generally, I tend not to want to take credit for that side. That's, yeah. I'm just involved uh, in the journey. I'm not the pilot. Yeah. Oh, the, look, there's some great journeys. And I ask a lot, all oh, my guests the same question, um, Stephen. It's if you were to write your own memoir title in three to four words, could you tell me what that would be? And can you? Yeah, it's um, it's 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 a hard one to think about, and it's I, I enjoy I enjoy thinking about that. Yeah. Um, and the, the way I would kind of put it would be stabilizing the foundations. Yeah. That's that's what I, that's what I love to do with 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 people is to look at actually where where are you. What are you doing? Mm. What do we need to, to look at? And it's and I love I love building I love pictures and building analogies because if you stabilize the foundations or the foundations are weak, the house mm. falls over. Yeah. So if we just take the time, stabilize the foundations, and the house may be built. Yeah. But you may just need to pin down the foundations. So yeah. kind of stabilizing the foundations or something along those lines is is kind of the yeah the, quote the title very good. And where can people find you, um, Stephen? They're looking for some um, at the moment. They can find me in Navin, <laughs> <laughs> but they, they can find me globally. <laughs> virtually, where can they find? Or on, online? Virtually, yeah. You, you, you'll find me across all. Like I'm, I'm quite active on LinkedIn. Yeah. Stephen McDonald on Twitter uh, under Timesworth. Yeah. And uh, Timesworth.ie as well. Timesworth.ie. That's great. Thank you, Stephen. Thanks for your time as well for being part of this. Yvonne, series, it's been Stephen. a pleasure. I always, I always enjoy having these chats. Oh, thank. thank you ah, much. yeah, they're great conversations. And if you'd like to contact me and share some positivity stories, contact me on yvonneredden.com or across all social platforms. And see you all next time on Once Upon a Pandemic. And bye for now, Stephen. Thanks a lot. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. See you guys. Thanks a million. Thanks a lot.